Well, good morning. Uh, we are going to start this press conference, and uh, I thank everybody for coming to uh, share in this very, very important uh, press conference, uh, which will highlight a critical issue for so many. Uh, I'm Congressmember Judy Chu from California, and the chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or what we call KPAC. I'm honored to be joined today by my fellow KPAC colleagues, Congressmember Alan Lowenthal and Congressmember Dilsey Cisneros, um, and uh, we will probably be joined by uh, a few others uh, within a short period of time. And of course, we're joined by leaders within the Southeast Asian American community to urge the Trump administration to put an end to the cruel detention and deportation of Southeast Asian refugees and families. Southeast Asians from Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam comprise the largest refugee population ever resettled in the United States. Many are here because their families either allied with the U.S. during the Vietnam War or because they were forced to flee violence and genocide from the Vietnam War and the Khmer Rouge genocide. Upon arrival in the U.S., many of these individuals were resettled into struggling and impoverished neighborhoods. And still coping with the significant trauma from the war, some of these individuals made mistakes as teenagers and young adults that funneled them into our criminal justice system. All of them served their time, and yet now they are being persecuted for crimes they committed and served sentence for many times for over three decades ago. Deporting them would be uh, an unconscionable form of double jeopardy. These are men and women with deep roots in their communities who lived in the United States for decades as lawful permanent residents. Many have families, including U.S. citizen children and spouses and are leaders within their community. They have checked in with Immigration and Customs Enforcement dutifully over the years without any issue. But under the Trump administration, they've become targets of Donald Trump's mass deportation force. In fact, from the end of 2016 to 2017, there was a 279% spike in the deportation of Cambodian Americans. In that same time period, there was also a 70% increase in the deportation of Vietnamese Americans. What's even more concerning is that the Trump administration has also placed visa sanctions um, on Laos and Cambodia in order to pressure those countries to accept more deportees. And under the Trump administration, there's also uncertainty over the current U.S.-Vietnam agreement that prevents Vietnamese Americans who arrived in the U.S. before 1995 from being deported. Needless to say, the Trump administration's anti-immigrant policies have had a chilling effect on the Southeast Asian refugees community, many of whom were born in refugee camps and have never set foot in the country to which ICE is threatening to deport them. Later in our press conference, we will be hearing from two individuals whose lives have been turned upside down due to the Trump administration's heartless policies. And while our immigrant communities are being attacked on all fronts, we in KPAC want to make sure that the stories of Southeast Asian refugees and families are not ignored. That's why KPAC has written letters to the White House and to the Department of Homeland Security urging President Trump to seize detentions and deportations of Southeast Asian refugees and to use prosecutorial discretion to focus on real threats to our national security. In the months to come, we will also be hosting a listening session in California to hear more from the impacted communities and to work with them to craft legislation to fix our broken immigration system and finally provide relief to these families. And now, I would like to turn the podium over to our Congress member, Alan Lowenthal, from, uh, from California's 47th Congressional District, and is, who is chair, uh, co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Vietnam. Oh, and uh, actually, I would like to turn it over to Congress member, Zoe Lofgren, uh, from California's 19th District, who is chair 
of the Judiciary Committee's uh, Subcommittee on Immigration and Citizenship, and also serves as a co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Vietnam. Thank you very much, Judy. I'll, I'll be uh, brief because it doesn't take a lot of words to condemn uh, what the administration is doing. You know, uh, when Saigon fell and the communists took over in Vietnam, a million refugees came to the United States, uh, fleeing from their communist oppressors. Many of them had worked with uh, our forces in, in the Vietnam War, and they have become Americans with us. I'm fortunate that in my uh, district in San Jose, we have a vibrant Vietnamese American uh, community that has uh, enriched our country enormously. But one of the things uh, that has been a groundstone of our uh, immigration policy is that people who have made a mistake, who came before 1995, uh, would not be returned to the communists uh, for any reason. And there was an agreement between the United States and the Vietnamese uh, government to that effect. Now think about this. You're a 10-year-old and you come to San Jose and it's, and it's difficult and maybe as a, as a young person you get in trouble. I've met young people that got in trouble and then you get your life straight and you start your life and you build a business and you get married and you have children and you have grandchildren. And now, a quarter of a century later, the Trump administration is coming to send you back to the communist regime you fled. That is an outrage. And we should be united against that. Uh, it is unconscionable. And I'm very pleased that Judy Chu and so many members of Congress are here today to put a stop to this outrage. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you so much, and now, yes. we get to have our co-chair of the Vietnam Caucus, Congressmember Lowen Caucus. Yes. And also co-chair of the Cambodia Caucus with, with uh, uh, Congressman Chabot of Ohio. And glad to join Congresswoman um, Lofgren and also Congressman Smith and myself as the co-chairs of the Congressional Caucus on Vietnam. Um, and, and I really want to begin by saying not only the importance of this, but really to thank uh, KPAC and Judy Chu for her leadership in uh, lifelong leadership uh, in championing the rights of refugees. I mean, this is not a single issue now. Uh, this is this has been a lifetime commitment, and also CIRAC since 1979. You know, that was a critical year, uh, as we know. That was the you know the end of the killing fields. Uh, in Cambodia, and it had been four years since the fall of Saigon. And the vast numbers of, of the Vietnamese uh, who fled the country, fled an oppressive regime, and uh, many who died as boat people in large numbers, uh, and a significant number of those who uh, landing and staying in Southern California. Uh, I represent the largest Cambodian community in the United States, the largest community outside of Phnom Penh, and that's in, uh, in the 47th Congressional District. And I also represent uh, a significant part of the Vietnamese American community. Um, what's interesting now is, you know, and, and I spend a lot of time dealing with folks who are uh, both Cambodians and Vietnamese who are uh, being deported, about to be wondering what their rights are, um, and, uh, and watching this situation go from bad to worse. It was bad enough when people were being deported, uh, for example, uh, back to Vietnam, after, who came after, the, to the United States after 1995. Now, what's so critical about 1995? The United States and the Republic of Vietnam were allies. People fought together. Uh, they died together. We had a commitment to those refugees when they came to the United States. We didn't even recognize Vietnam until 1995. We made sure in the memorandum, and when we did recognize them, 
that everybody that came would be treated as refugees and, and as people who, were, who really were part of the American fabric now. And if you come to our, my district, and uh, I'm glad to see Congressman Rauda's district, which we share, uh, you will see a vibrant community. You will see in the Vietnamese community uh, lawyers and doctors and teachers and, and all the bit small businesses. Um, and uh, as bad as it is, as you heard, the attack on uh, Vietnamese Americans and the doubling of deportations since Trump has been in office, doubling, over doubling. Uh, the reinterpretation of a memorandum of understanding that was agreed upon by President Bush, followed by President Obama, that said, we are not deporting people who came here before 1995. This is their home. Those that came after, still we should be deporting, you know, and all of a sudden there's been an explosion of deportation of those. But now this administration says, no, we're reinterpreting that memorandum of understanding. And the same thing, the same issues are going on, you know, and it's so interesting because the president is today in Vietnam, a country that denies human rights, religious freedom, ability to dissent. It denies it all. And our caucus, in payback, we've all told the president, you've got to bring up human rights on this trip. It will never be brought up on this trip. Uh, I, I, I wish it was, but I, I have no... And uh, the same thing is occurring in the Cambodian <laughs> Deportations doubling. This is, this is a real attack uh, upon Americans. And uh, we shouldn't stand for it. I'm just proud to be with KPAT, and I'm proud to stand with CIRAC, and to say uh, we've got to stop this, and we've got to have our voices speak out. Thank you so much, Congress Member Lowenthal. Uh, and now, I see that we have been joined by our, one of our newer KPAC members, Congress Member Harley Ruda from California's 48th Congressional District. And it's really right in the heart of the Southeast Asian community in Orange County. So, Congress Member Ruda. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Chu and Lowenthal and Cisneros. And I think I missed uh, Representative Lofgren, who was here a little bit ago, and you would have thought with all these California members, we would have found a warmer place to do this. But, uh, uh, but thanks to all of you for being here. This is such an important issue. Uh, my district, Orange County, California, 48th district, has a very significant uh, Asian American population, uh, certainly dominated by the Vietnamese population, and an important part, an incredibly important part of the fabric of our community. Uh, we know that thousands of these men and women came to the United States fleeing violence and genocide from the Vietnam War in an effort to search for a better life and achieve the American dream, which many of them have done. But my constituents are worried. Uh, they see a government that is focused on removing individuals who do not pose any threat whatsoever uh, to the public safety. This administration is doing nothing to help that situation. In fact, they're making the situation worse by focusing on deportations that do not uh, affect the security of our country. In fact, just the opposite, they're tearing the security apart. They're doing nothing to help the detained uh, individual from Orange County resident Michael Nguyen, who is being held by the Vietnamese government. We need this administration, the White House, to stop tearing families apart needlessly, whether it's at the southern border or whether it is the constituents in the Asian American population here in the United States. And I stand here with the other representatives and you today to assure you we will continue to fight back, we will continue to fight for you, and continue to hold the administration accountable. Thank you. Thank you, member, remember, uh, Congress member Congress uh, uh, Ruda. And now we have um, Congress member uh, Gil Cisneros uh, from California's 39th district. Uh, he's another new member who's joined KPAC's executive board and has been such an effective speaker on behalf of Asian Pacific Islander affairs, of which he has a very large population in this district. So thank you, Congressmember Cisneros. Thank you, Congresswoman Chu. Thank you all for being here today. 
Where my district is goes over three counties in California, uh, Northern Orange County, uh, Eastern Los Angeles County, and we even have a little bit of San Bernardino. But a third of our population is made up of the AAPI community. And the detention and deportation of the Southeast Asian refugees from Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam is nothing more than shameful, immoral, and unnecessary. Now, in the 39th district in California, there's a significant number of Asian Americans and immigrants from Southeast Asia, and I'm proud to represent such a hard-working group, diverse, caring, and, and, and an incredible, um, hard-working individual. The AAPI community continues to make significant contributions to our diverse culture, heritage, and enriches our national, nation's history. In recent years, we've seen a spike in the number of detentions and removal of lawful permanent residents who came to the United States as refugees fleeing the violence from Vietnam and, and the Kumar Rouge. Like the refugees and asylum seekers and refugees at the southern border, we need to work towards ending the detention and deportations of refugees from Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Many of those impacted were born in refugee camps and have never set foot in the countries to which they are being deported to. Their families are still coping with significant trauma from the countries they fled. And some of these refugees made mistakes as teenagers and young adults and were funneled into the criminal justice system. However, they all served their time, and the majority of them transformed their lives to become productive community members, business owners, and loving families. And now they are unexpectedly being arrested, detained, and deported. This needs to end now. The president and the administration need to re-examine these policies on the deportation of Southeast Asian Americans who prove no threat to public safety, and are interwoven into our communities and support U.S. citizen families. So I am proud to stand with all of you here today to support this community and to make sure that we work towards ending these unlawful deportations. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, Congressman Wissy And now we have Quinn Din, the Executive Director of the Southeast Asia Resource Action Center CIRAC, and they have been such long-time advocates for the Southeast Asian community. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Chu. At CIRAC, as you mentioned, we've worked on advocating against this painful issue for over 20 years. And I want to thank KPAC for your leadership in standing with us and our communities to really denounce these deportations that have been tearing our families and our communities apart and creating mass fear across the country. We want to thank you, especially Congresswoman Chu, along with Congresswoman Jayapal and Congressmember Lowenthal, and Senators Hirono and Harris, who collectively led letters denouncing these deportations to the Department of Homeland Security, Department of State, and the White House because these letters were signed by 78 congressional leaders from across the country, from 25 states and the territory of Guam, more than we've ever seen in our 20 years of work on this issue. And across these 20 years, what we've seen is that to date, there are over 16,000 individuals with deportation orders to Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And as you've heard already, these deportations have doubled, more than doubled under the Trump administration. For Cambodia, we saw annual deportations on average of 42, jump to 110 in 2018. And in Vietnam, we saw the deportation average of 32 per year, jump up to 122 in 2018. What we know is that the Trump administration's tactics are only going to grow and become more aggressive with news that this year alone, there will be 200 Cambodian Americans slated for deportation. The anxiety of changes to potential um, to the MOU with Vietnam is only creating more anxiety for our community members who are currently protected. And finally, visa sanctions against Laos, the only country out of the three that actually has not accepted more deportations under this administration. 
And what we've seen for the past 20 years is that this nightmare of deportation has been a reality for not just these 16,000 individuals, but their families, their parents, their children, and their partners who rely on them for emotional and financial support. In our historic report launched last year with the National Asian and Pacific American Women's Forum, we talked about 10 women who voiced the hearts and souls of these partners, of these children, of these siblings of the 16,000, of the anxiety, the depression, the trauma, from not knowing if one day their families will be ripped apart because of our politics, from the distress of suddenly becoming single parents overnight, and of young people who grew up with only knowing trauma, without their fathers, without their brothers, forced to take care of their hurting parents, grandparents, while they too take their own healing journey. So today, we stand with those 16,000, their families and their communities, to rally our nation, to defund ICE, and to dismantle the heinous deportation and detention policies targeting immigrant, refugee, and asylum seekers. Today, we stand with families to call for dignity for detained immigrants, to cut mandatory detention bed usage. And today, we stand with our Southeast Asian American communities, refugees and immigrants from across the country, our strong democratic leadership to not just hold the line on justice, but to move it further than we ever have by standing together against the Trump administration's attempts to divide this nation, immigrant and non-immigrant, by standing together to protect our families through immigration policies and due process that keep our families together rather than tear them apart, and by standing together for love, despite all odds, knowing that we are stronger than we've ever been before. Thank you. And now we get to hear two personal stories. Um, first, we hear from Monta Chum from Minnesota, who was a lead organizer of the Release Minnesota 8 campaign to release her brother and other Cambodian Americans who faced deportation. My name is Monta Chum. I am an impacted family member and co-founder of Release Minnesota 8. My family fled the genocide in Cambodia by the hands of the Khmer Rouge. My parents were separated when fleeing the war, but thankfully were reunited in a Thai refugee camp when, where my two younger brothers and I were born. My family lived in the camp for about five to six years before coming to the United States in July of 1984 as refugees. Our family lived in subsidized housing with no knowledge of American culture or any support of dealing with the trauma of war. We were bullied nearly every day, called different racial slurs. We began to stand up for ourselves and then labeled gang members. This is the story of so many Southeast Asian families. Release Minnesota 8 started as a campaign in August of 2016 after the detention of eight Cambodian Minnesotans, one of whom was my brother. When we came to the United States, my brother was only a one-year-old. In his young adulthood, he committed a crime, breaking three windows at a bar inflicting a criminal sentence of 365 days. Little did we know his mistake and sentence by the Ramsey County Courthouse would be the cause of his process through the deportation system. This is a problem with our criminal justice system. Immigrants and refugees are getting picked up for something like breaking free windows and pressured into taking plea deals. Most who were not informed that their plea would lead to immigration consequences. Being a directly impacted family member I've experienced firsthand the trauma this canon does cause a person, especially the children of whom we don't hear from when speaking about this topic. The unseen and unspoken experiences families deal with when facing the fear of losing a loved one. We live in fear every single day. The financial burdens, the sleepless nights, the wounds, the pain, the sorrow, and ultimately the fatherless and motherless homes which breaks structures at home and instabilities as a result of these deportations and family separations. While fighting for my brother to be released, there was a lot of time taken away from my own children. I have four children, and at the time, I lost so much time that I can never take back. And although they knew what we were doing was very important, it was still not enough for them. My oldest daughter, who was a freshman in college, once said to me, you love your brother more than you love us. When, we just, when she needed me the most in her final years of high school, I was out organizing and fighting for the release of loved ones. As a mom, that breaks my heart. 
I am here at Capitol Hill amongst all of you with the support of our different representatives that I'm thankful and honored to be here with, along with my CFIN and CRAC family to demand an end to the increased detentions and deportations of Southeast Asian Americans, many of whom are fathers, mothers, partners, and leaders in their community. Separations of families or the destruction of the foundations create further traumas, children especially, for those who have intentionally made many leaps forward to rehabilitate themselves into productive citizens. Release Minnesota Aid is a group of family members that have never organized before, but through our determination and resiliency, we were able to get three of the original eight released, but it wasn't easy. We received so many no's from elected officials, from lawyers, from community members, business owners, before we got a yes, but we kept fighting. We were successful because of our community organizing efforts. We worked very closely with the lawyers and the law school to develop a legal strategy that was rooted in community organizing. There are currently over 14,000 Southeast Asians with final orders of removal nationally. And in my community alone, the Cambodian community, in the past year under this administration, the deportations have increased by over 279%. During our campaign, we also used a media strategy that gave us a lot of visibility and impacted people started to reach out to us. Because of our success and after we knew that we, the community members and organizers can do this, we continued to do the work even after our campaign ended. Release Minnesota Aid is now an organization with the mission to provide direct services to Southeast Asian families impacted by detention and deportation through community organizing and leadership development to bring social and political change. We are committing, committed to ending all deportations. Now, if you could please do this with me. Put your fist in the air and say, defund ICE. Defund ICE. Thank you so much. Next, we have Cheng Nguyen of Orange County, one of the individuals directly impacted by the increased targeting of Southeast Asian refugees. Tong was pardoned by California Governor Brown. We are honored to have him to share his powerful story today. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Kostner, um, uh, congressional members, and CREAC for this opportunity to speak here and share our voices uh, as it impacted um, Southeast Asian brothers who are facing deportation limbo. Uh, myself, the impacted person, I, at 16 years old, I made a mistake. I was involved in a crime that landed me many years in prison. Um, thankfully, I was able to get out of prison. After I got out of prison, I, ha I had a deportation order entered against me, and I was facing deportation at the time. Uh, that was in 2011. Um, I was thankful that uh, the U.S. and the Vietnam has a 2008 repatriation agreement that spared me from deportation at the time. Um, so I became actively involved in the community, trying to rebuild the community and helping my community, uh, my community based on my experience as a teenager who made a stupid and teenager full of mistakes that ended, uh, landed me in prison. So I want to get back to the community. And then come 2017 when the president took the office and began enforcement of deportation against all immigrants, especially the Southeast Asian, the Cambodians and the Vietnamese communities to become a target for deportation under the administration. Uh, that became a reality of fear to my life as a person uh, facing deportation back to Vietnam. Uh, I thought that uh, 2008 uh, MOU was protecting me at the time, but that reality uh, become real and more every day where my life was turning upside down that every time that I go to ice check-in I would think that would be the last day I would be with my family uh, my wife and my stepson um, but through my work with the community activism I, I'm thankful that uh, on Thanksgiving Governor Brown the California uh, California Governor Brown granted me a, a pardon which spares me from deportation but my case is not unique my case is not uh, 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 you know um, special. There's a lot of, of my brothers and sisters, the Southeast Asian brothers and sisters, are still in limbo because of this administration that making us a target uh, to the, for deportation now. What we, what the, um, I'm, I'm urging the public and the community to become more aware is that most of us came here when we were young. We made mistakes when we were teenagers, when we were kids, but after we got out of prison, we turned our life around. We became a 
productive community member. We can become a father and we have businesses and we pay tax. We, we contribute to the community. But after many years now, this administration want to turn us into a target, calling us criminal so that they can effectuate this deportation against all of us. Um, for the Vietnamese alone, we are thankful that we have the 2008 MOUs that are protecting us. But all of our Southeast Asian brothers and sisters suffer the war that the U.S. went over there. So I'm urging the administration to please give us mercy and consideration that we, because the U.S. was in Southeast Asia, that's why all of us are over here today. And please grant us the same condition and fairness that you know grant to the Vietnamese community with the with the 2008 repatriation, uh, repatriation agreement our Cambodian brothers and sisters are under threat right now where the ISIS continue to rounding up and targeting our Cambodian uh, brothers and sisters trying to deport them back to uh, Cambodia as uh, soon the Vietnamese are going to go through the same thing soon the Laotian and then the Burmese are going through the same things so this is the time where I'm calling out to all of our Southeast Asian, Asian brothers and sisters and our community to please stand up and stand up and asking and urging this administration to please have consideration, have mercy that again, the U.S. was in Southeast Asia with the Vietnam War. That's why all of us are over here. So bringing us back to the place where we no longer call home is both cruel and, 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 and it's unusual. And this is the family separation in the most inhumane way. When ICE is taking people away, from, taking the husband away from the family, they're living behind the wives and the kids, and then the husband is the main provider for the family. What they don't know is that once they're taking the person and detain them and try to deport them, they're taking away incomes, they're taking away businesses, and they make the, the wives responsible. The wives and the kids are victims to this administration trying to deport people. So if people, um, if the communities are really um, having mercy on us or consideration for us for what we're going through, think about our wives and kids who are victims of this. And I'm asking the administration to please, please um, have consideration and, and, and uh, restore you know, the discretion to the judge, immigration judge, so that they can look at our case and have sympathy to our cases. We had to pay our debt to society many, many years ago. Today, we are community members. We pay taxes. We, 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 we help make America better. So please, just stop this. Thank you. Well, thank you for your inspirational story, Tung. I really appreciate it. Uh, this brings us to the end of our press conference, but I know that uh, some of our speakers will be are still here for questions and answers. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for participating in this.